Hello and welcome to Rules and Rulings, helping you be judge, jury, but hopefully not executioner of your 5e D&D games. Today we're going over why healing sucks in D&D and what we can do about it. Healing in D&D comes primarily from the spellcasting options available to clerics, druids, and paladins. Some class and species features also grant access to healing, and of course the humble potion of healing provides a little bit extra. As a general rule, healing spells and features are less potent than their damage-dealing counterparts. The reasoning behind this is simple. If you're capable of healing more than the damage you can be dealt, it will have two effects on the game. The effect of attrition is heavily negated, and Dungeons and Dragons is designed with attrition in mind as a balancing force. Secondly, when you can reliably heal for more damage than you will take, a combat system that is already criticized for its lack of speed drags on even further. In the world created by D&D's healing system, healing spells are most effective on half-dead PCs. The so-called yo-yo effect encourages players to hold off on healing someone until they're already making death saves, because preemptive healing holds no real value. Aye, unless someone's holding concentration on an important effect, it's just more efficient to let them nearly die. The Grave Cleric takes this idea to its logical extreme, providing maximum healing to unconscious allies. There are also features that care about whether a character is at or below half their maximum health, placing that as a limit on further healing. In the real world, minor injuries and scrapes are easier to deal with than potentially mortal wounds. Wouldn't it be great if we could model that effect in the game while avoiding the problems caused by healing being too powerful? Right, so what if we flip that concept about bloodied creatures on its head? While you are at or above half your maximum hit points, effects that heal you do so for their maximum amount instead of rolling dice. Or for a more conservative idea, while you are at or above half your maximum hit points, effects that heal you do so for no less than their average rolled amount. This gives those heal to half effects a reason to actually exist, and encourages healing to be used in a timely fashion. Waiting a little too long to heal your ally will make the results of that healing less predictable. That works thematically if we think of healing as bolstering the life force that's already there, rather than just adding more life into the equation. It also neatly explains why healing doesn't really work on undead or constructs. Or the unconscious. We can go a step further and avoid the yo-yo effect almost entirely. While you are making death saving throws, an effect that heals you provides a success on your saving throws instead of restoring hit points. This would mean that in order to have a downed ally pop back up, they would need to be stabilized with a medicine check and then healed, healed several times, or pass their saving throws and then be healed. The motivation to keep them alive is much more pronounced when the cost of getting them up is more than a bonus action healing word. So that's healing in D&D, which definitely has its problems. But what do you think? Do these optional rules appeal to you, or would they create more problems? Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you next time.